I'm lucky enough to to be hands-on in making these things tick and bringing back the heartbeats and making them move and come alive. Everybody can understand them. They're doing something. It's surprise, it's pleasure, it's awe. They, they're taking something in. Everything does something different and they're entertainers. They dance, they, they perform circus acts. Uh, they're there to entertain you and that was exciting. It is replicating life. Each one has its own character, its own space in the home. They do become part of the family, really. This is inanimate objects that appear to be alive. Every little blemish, every bit of redressing, every bit of damage reflects something of its history. And I need to start working backwards, seeing what needs putting right, and what needs accentuating. When we first bring an automata to the workshop, one of the first things we'll do is clean the glass eyes. And it's like drawing back the curtains and then, woof, the character bursts out of the automata. And I think that's when we really get to know them as individuals. I like the idea that I'm making in some way artificial life, I'm making something come alive. That keeps me going and enthralls me when I see glimpses of that happening on the bench in front of me. You're certainly never alone in a room full of automatons. When I look at one, when one catches my eye, it is like a person. Yeah. There's a predictability about the movement of automata that's really reassuring. It's like having a little bit of life. My favourite thing is watching people watching automata. When I watch an audience watching me demonstrating the drinking bear, and they go, oh, 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 I got it, I know how it does it. And I say, no, 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 it's a, it's a magic bottle. I love that. On the clockwork fruit seller automaton, his fruit magically open up in turn. Each one, the fruit opens and reveals a little scene. So our fruit seller here is something of a magician. His fruit have surprises. We complement each other so well. Michael does the mechanics and he knows instinctively what an automata needs. He does the things I can't do, I do the things he can't do, and we work really well together. Sculpting, painting, these things are really important. Together, we bring many different skill sets which the automaton requires to restore properly. The ones we really, really love, we don't restore, and then we don't have to sell them. The Heba's got a hole in her chest plate and you can just see the musical movement poking out. I always imagine that that is her heart. That's what gives her life. There is a real purity about her. What she does do is completely magical. And she's got these fantastically sculpted hands. They're absolutely beautiful and they, they move in time to the music as if she was playing her harp. The Cups and Balls Magician is a really nice example of the classic magic trick. He'll meet your eye, he look left and right to make sure no one's left out, and his jaws working hell for leather, giving out this little pattern talk. There's no magic I could add to him. With the turn of the key, the automata is coming to life. It is artificial life, I guess. 
each piece, no matter what it does, will give a little bit of pure pleasure. You can really see it in their eyes, in their faces and their expressions. Automata surround me in my real life and they've never entered my dreams, they don't need to. I make every day like a dream. <laughs>